one greater. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Hallelujah. So we should be walking with a snap to our, our walk and a smile on our face. Amen. Come on now. Hallelujah. The people should know, hey, that guy, something's up with him. He's a child of God. Hello. Amen. Come on. Hello. Come on. Hello. Come on. You got to know that you're a child of God. Hello. Come on. Can I get an amen in there? Hallelujah. The people got to know, people around you, there's certain people in your life that only you can minister to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only you. God is so good. Amen. God is so good.
glorify your name, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the breath of life, Lord, and life itself, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord, and for bringing us through this day. We thank you, Father, for keeping us through the night and keeping our families, Father. We thank you for keeping our loved ones. We thank you for keeping our church family, Father. We thank you for keeping the main sanctuary and the gathering center, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Father, we thank you for a roof over our heads, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, Father. Food on our table, Lord, and a nice place to sleep, Father. We thank you, Lord, and we give you honor and we give you praise, Lord. And we thank you for such a blessed life that we live, Lord. Such a blessed life we live, Lord. With all the tragedy and chaos going on around in the world, Father, we thank you, Lord. We can't say thank you enough, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord, for everything, Lord, from the big to the small, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, giving you all praise, honor, and glory, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Abba, Father, for sending your son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for us, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us and comforting us in those hard times. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for always being there. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our pastors, Apostle Rocky, Pastor Bali, Benaiah, Lord. Blood of Jesus upon them, Lord. Holy Spirit, saturate them where they are right now. Fill them up with your glory, with your presence, with your power, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our pastors, Lord. We thank you for the associate pastors and their families, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the worship pastor and the youth pastor and their families, Father. We thank you for your missionary, Lord. And we thank you for his connection to this house, the Lord's Team Ministries, Word of Truth Church. We thank you, Father, for each and every family and person represented here in this place, Lord, that you would bless them and cover them, Father, and comfort them, Lord, for whatever they may be going through, Lord. You know, Father. You know. We may not see it, Father, but you know. We thank you, Lord, and we ask, Father, that you would just forgive us, Father, of our sins, Father, the seen and the unseen, the heard and the unheard, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for we thank you for the children in the gathering center, Lord. We thank you for security and food, Father. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful island, Maui, that we live on. We're lifting up the families in Lahaina, Lord, and uh, upcountry Maui, Lord. Uh, we thank you for the recovery, Lord, and all the, the help you're sending their way, Father. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for using us to, to bless others, Lord. We thank you for using this house, Lord, to bless other people your works, Father, to your goodness, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We lift, lifting up the nation of Israel, Father, and we pray, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem, Father. Help our country, Lord. Help our leaders. Touch our soldiers that are away, Father. Touch our soldiers that are home, at home, Lord. Bless their families, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Giving you all the praise, Lord. Giving you all the honor, Lord. Who are we, Father, that you are mindful of us? thank you for this night to worship you, to praise you, to receive your word and all that you have for us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we all pray and say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Your faith has made you well. Wow. Beautiful graphics. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you. A little bit of update. After service this past Sunday, a pastor said, oh, I got an envelope for you. And so, you know, he gave a condolence card for my mom having gone to be with the Lord a couple of weeks ago, a private service. And, uh, you know, it says the church Ohana. And then, you know, he gave... Three hundred dollars in there. It's like, praise be to God. Thank you. Then also, an update as uh, Pastor Morris sends me the WhatsApp pictures and stuff like that. He said, uh, "Hey, I'm thinking of going over the border to see the Thai side and all their prosperity and." Um, visit Tesco Lotus. So I said, yeah, you know, bring your wife and treat her to a meal and go buy some stuff at the, you know, the big store like that. And then he showed me a picture and they had a big pizza and some couple side 
dishes over there, all smiles with uh, background pizza em- emblems and stuff like that. It's like, all right, praise God, you know, and he showed me the picture and encouraged me. He said, thank you for encouraging us to go ahead, spend some of the $870 I sent this month and just, you know, bless them like that. The season over there, having the rainy season, rice planting, and right about October, November now, cooler season, they're uh, bringing in the rice harvest. So he's going up to the mountain villages and bringing in all the um, first fruits harvest into the church. So he's showing those celebrations and things like that over there. So... One picture he showed me was uh, the motorcycle that I gave him, a Sonic 125cc, that on the back, he had like mud chains. And the first time I seen a mud chain on a motorcycle, because going up on the red dirt and slipping and sliding and everything, it's like, wow, interesting. And so, thank God, you know. Your seeds, your generosity, even like this evening, we thank you for your thousand for return in whatever you're going through like that. You know, you can believe and trust him for it because, you know, as you have given, he gives the increase, the provision, and God is good, you know. He is for you. He is for you. He is for all of us, you know. We'll go to uh, the scripture, Mark ten fifty two, New King James Version. And then we'll read. It says, Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Mark ten fifty two. You may be seated. Thank you for honoring the word. Title of the message, Your Faith Has Made You Well. King James Version, Thy faith hath made thee whole. In Mark chapter 10, I'll read through that, beginning with verse 46. It says, Then they came to Jericho, and as he went off, went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood and commanded him to be called. Then he called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to him, came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, meaning teacher, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise be to God. The blind man heard in the multitude and just being by the roadside and in Jericho. And Jericho sits on the lower level near the Dead Sea in the Jordan Valley, and it's on the roadway all the way up to Jerusalem in the higher mountain elevation. And that blind man, Bartimaeus, heard as people would walk by and talk about the miracles that they heard at the Sea of Galilee and at Capernaum and different things. But he's, he's marked, you know, he has this garment that identifies him. But he threw it off. I won't need this no more. Amen. I'm going to Jesus. Took the step of faith. And then Jesus told him, 
Go your way. Your faith has made you well. We see a couple of chapters back, Mark chapter 5. We'll read verse 25 through 34. This is about the woman with the issue of blood, the blood disease. It says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, First she heard, she heard from others, she heard from the crowd. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen. And then she acts. She has to declare and speak her faith to release her faith. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power, virtue, the anointing, like electricity, whew, the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched you? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Hallelujah. Once again, to Bartimaeus and to this woman, your faith has made you well. He didn't say, Oh, I came from heaven and the Father's glory is with me. He never ministered from his heavenly power, but from his earthly nature. Just like each and every one being born into this world, touched by the Father, now you have an anointing. But they were under an old covenant. That's why... He, the blind man referred to son of David, the covenant that they were living under the old covenant. But how much more you live under a greater new covenant based on the blood of Jesus and the son of God has come to live, dwell, empower, and live within you. And that's why at times God moves miraculously in, in the streets, in the services, or big meetings, but you can always release your faith anytime, anywhere, and believe God for your healing and your health, your most important physical possession, you know, your healing and, and your health in these last days where, you know, medical expenses and different things getting so expensive like that. But how much more? If God, through Jesus, told the people, your faith has made you whole. How much more today your faith will make you well. Yeah. And so inside of you, there's a greater one. And the spirit of God living and dwelling in you. And I'll remind you at the end about the greater one in you. But now I because hearing so much about the nation of Israel and how our faith life and everything is focused on what's happening in the nation of Israel. There's a saying that says, Barukata Adonai Elehenu Melech Haolam. Blessed be the Lord our God, sovereign of the universe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even in this time, young people in their 19, 20s, 21, touched by the, their Jewish heritage, making Aliyah. And Aliyah is to go back to your homeland, to go serve in the military. And, you know, people are traveling back these times, you know. 
We have uh, in Genesis 12, 7, a word from the Lord way back. Genesis 12, 7. I also want to touch on a little bit verses 12, beginning 1 through 3. It talked about... Um, now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your kindred and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your descendants, I will give this land to your descendants. I will give this land. God doesn't change his word. And it says, and there he built an altar to the Lord and who had appeared to him. That's their land. We keep that in mind even today and what the nation of Israel is going through. And in Ezekiel chapter 12, I was reading this a couple weeks ago, you know, just impressed to read this. It talks about Judah's captivity portrayed. And it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, meaning Ezekiel, Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house which has eyes to see but does not see and ears to hear but does not hear for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, son of man, prepare your belongings for captivity and go into captivity by day in their sight. You shall go from your place into captivity to another place in their sight. It may be that they will consider though they are re a rebellious house. By day you shall bring out your belongings in their sight as though going into captivity and at evening you shall go in their sight like those who go into captivity. Dig through the wall in their sight and carry your belongings in their sight and you shall bear them on your shoulders and carry them at twilight and you shall cover your face so that you cannot see the ground for I have made you a sign to the house of Israel. That's a tough calling for a man, you know, e Ezekiel, <laughs> to obey God and carry your bags and everybody watching you to the city and even digging through the wall to show something that everybody's partying, have a good time and rebellious against the Lord. But the Lord's dealing with the nation. He loves them. He wants them to obey and follow him. So to be the prophet is like, whoo, to speak for God, but he got to deliver what God speaks to his heart. And verse 12 says, And the prince who is among them shall bear his belongings on his shoulder at twilight and go out. They shall dig through the wall to carry them out through it. He shall cover his face so, so that he cannot see the ground with his eyes. And this word that Ezekiel re received, the prince of the city was Zedekiah. And in time to come, after this prophecy, when the Babylonians came and surrounded the city, Zedekiah had to go through the wall at nighttime, and he was captured. And his eyes were plucked out, and... He was marched to Babylon, and then he died there. But just the severity, when God speaks and, you know, directs a nation, and it says in uh, verse 23, the days are at hand and the fulfillment of every vision, verse 25, for I, the Lord, speak, 
and the words which I speak will come to pass. Verse 26, again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, look, look, the house of Israel is saying the vision that he sees is for many days for now. And he prophesies of times afar off. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, none of my words will be postponed anymore, but the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord God. And so, you know, people in the natural will say, oh, that'll be for a while, you know. It'll be postponed, you know. Don't make us so depressed <laughs> and discouraged and everything like that. You know, we want to live it up, have a good time. But the nation went into captivity and eventually came back to their land, repented and turned and, you know, God worked with the nation. And sometimes, you know, in our own nation, not, not looking now at Israel, but our own nation, we're thinking, whoa, you know, God could be correcting us and warning us of a, prideful arrogance and rebellious nation or things that's going on with you know in the schools and education and with indoctrinating young children to this different things like that it's like it grieves the father's heart and so it's like a warning you know people prophets and people and teachers and christians are speaking out against it and uh, teachers' meetings against the board, but then, you know, they send people to arrest them now. You know, people are fearful to speak out and come against what is happening in, in the textbooks and the things like that, you know. So it's, it's like, whoa, you cannot push things off. It's a little more serious. That's why the, the church is praying and fasting and interceding as Pastor Bobby gave the message about drawing closer to God, you know. It's like more and more in your heart, you're tugged to spend time with the Lord and realize, wow, he has deposited his life into you. And the same spirit of life that was in Christ Jesus lives and dwells in you. And so you, you don't have to be fearful. You can shake off the chains and the uh, who worries and concerns and know in the midst of this tumultuous land, you can succeed and follow the Lord, you know, be led of him in all that you do and follow his leading and know it's like, okay, I'm still, you know, true to him and he's blessing you, blessing you in your finances, in financial difficulties and times like that. You have planted seed, you have sown into the nation of Israel in different means, and you're blessed as you bless the nation. And the nation of Israel now is facing challenges. In the north, you have the Hezbollah, South, the Hamas, Israel financing all the rockets and the armament, or Iran is uh, financing all of that and everything. Then you have the leader in um, Lebanon, Nasrallah, speaking out against Israel over a speech. You have the leader in uh, Turkey, Erdogan, speaking out against Israel, and then you realize, whoa, this is like a precursor for years to come down when nations, where Ezekiel 38 talks about nations, Gog and Magog, Tubal, and nations will come against Israel, Turkey, and from Moscow, Russia, and kings of the east will all come to fight against Israel but God will deliver them and so the nation has to stand up has to stand for their own rights and beliefs outside of what other nations and Palestinians and protests pushing against what they should do and even you know today you know Biden says oh 
Benjamin Netanyahu, you should have a three-day uh, ceasefire and, you know, let things be taken care of. And, you know, there's a, a contingent was in the Senate in, in America, you know, and a, a young man was who has a brother in captivity. And he was speaking out, you know, and warning too, you know, America, you can be next. So help Israel and help us out like that. And thank God, you know, the military and, and people and the support of Israel, America is standing right there. But the thing is, our leaders and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, you know, what influence they're putting upon the nation of Israel has important repercussions if they're coming from another side, you know, where they're being influenced by uh, the cabal or deep state and globalists and people pressuring them to do this, to say this, to pressure Israel this way. And, you know, we can see all the changes taking place in America from the, their leadership like that and their warnings. So the thing is, uh, you know, even Barack Hussein, Obama has been influencing Biden in decisions and things like that. So there's many things we may not know just living out here, but there's influence that can go bad against a nation and so our nation and leaders cannot you know influence and speak to israel to to do this and oh you know be nice and give up more land and uh, you know in times past england has had the balfour declaration and you know given up forced israel to give up certain lands and then their empire decreased and then, you know, Clinton and the peace talks, you know, okay, divvy up this part of your land. And in America has faced some calamities and everything like that. And so, you know, there's also several days ago, they had like nine countries that moved their embassies outside of I Israel. They closed down and, and left. And those nine Countries were Turkey, Jordan, Chad, South Africa, Bahrain, Chile, Bolivia, Honduras, Colombia. And so even south of the U.S. in, in those countries, they're making the decision to go with the Palestinian state and their agenda and everything, which is right on our back door. And so there's some influence there, you know. Years ago, maybe 25 years ago, you know, there was this prophecy club and on the TBN network and, you know, they would bring in different speakers like that talking about the last days. And I remember, you know, this one man who talked about the warnings in, in America and he was from Romania and his name is... Um, Dumitru Duduman, a Romanian evangelist. His father was a pastor, so he, you know, grew up in the communist days. And as he grew older, you know, he helped people smuggle in 300,000 Bibles to Armenia and Russia and throughout Romania. And then after that time, he got arrested in Russia and then was sent back to his country of Romania and they put him in uh, the jail. And he suffered mightily in that, you know, trying to question him and who was helping him and all the questioning, but he never broke down or told anything. And in the torture of beating and, you know, putting him in a room, a dark room, and there's uh, 
big giant rats because there's a keeper in the jail who was taking care of all the rats under the floor. So he'd be trying to sleep at night and the rats would come crawl over him and everything like that. He would uh, cry out to God, you know, because they want him to die as the rats eat him. But he cried out to God and Gabriel showed up in the full light and said, you know, I am here to help you persevere. You will go through this torment. And that great light caused all the rats to die. And the next morning when that prison guard came in who was taking care of the rats and said, oh, you didn't die? Oh, man, you killed all my rats and everything like that. He was all mad, you know. Then there was another time, you know, they put him in another tight little room, water dropping from the ceiling, his feet on some metal bars with water going under him like that. He's freezing and everything like that, suffering. Then another time, Gabriel appeared to him because he went to the electric ch chair two times. And he said, plead the blood of Jesus, plead the blood of Jesus. And so in that torture and his teeth was all damaged and everything falling out and in the pool of blood thrown back in his cell and the soldier, uh, the prison guards would say, oh, we got you now, you testify, we got you on tape, listen to this. And then he would listen and he says, he was saying, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. And so God helped him to the point where his final time of torture and six uh, jailers in it would stomp on him, broke nine ribs and everything like that. And then he was crying out to God and everything. And the colonel of the jail and the prison, he had a hemorrhage. And he had the guy's papers in his hand, and he died right there. Then the second colonel came in to take over, and he came to Dimitrov and said, oh, we're letting you out. We're letting you out today. Gather your things, and don't pray to God to have me killed, you know. <laughs> you're going out. And God said, you're going to America. You're going to America. So wow. in his time, you know, he probably now in his 60s or 70s, his grandson is interpreting for him, but he was traveling throughout America with an assignment to warn America and to repent and, you know, change from your wicked ways and, you know, America, you're going to burn, you know, and he saw a vision of, uh, like, New York and Florida burning and, and things like that, so then... Another vision that he had was he saw, hey, some Russian spies in the land, and they were, they knew where all the nuclear bases were. And then from the south, he saw southern nations sh shooting bombs from the sea, from the ocean, towards America, different cities. And so he said he saw. Cuba, Nicaragua, Mexico, Central America, and two other countries from the south that were shooting rockets towards America. And in just the thought when we mentioned that, hey, Chile, Colombia, Honduras, Colombia moved their embassies out of Israel. And so now they have in their heart and, you know, and being against America, who's helping Israel, and did things foment in the years to come, and things like that. So, some changes, some warnings, some precautions. Then, there's um, this other evangelist and seer from young age. He was, you know, seeing different things uh, about things in the Capitol and the president and Trump and different things. And he's now, his name is Timothy Dixon. He's online and, you know, preaching smaller meetings in the U.S. And he's from Alabama. 
And he said, one time he saw, hey, Chinese, Russian troops in, coming in, in, in America, and they're situated in different cities. And they have ways to overthrow the, the different cities like that, you know. But the government, in this time of turmoil, when the riots and protests, things happening, this America is distracted, that these people, you know, instead of having big fights, they're taking over because the government has orders to stand down, you know, relinquish authority and different things like that. So then he mentioned, hey, I saw ships towards Hawaii. And it's like, hey, I kind of take, take a note of that, you know, little things, put it on the back burner. And you think, what's the back burner? When you go to the Biltmore Hotel, old hotels in New York or in Russia, the flats, in the back of the apartments, there's this radiator-looking thing, you know. And in the cold winter from the central building, they heat up and they send hot water running through all the radiators and the heat heated pipes like that. And so people put their socks and dry things on that back burner and just leave them there on the, you know, different mantle and shelf. And so... Sometimes even these little prophecies, different things you, he you hear, you say, okay, I'll take note. And then you just keep them on file in the back burner, you know, and forget about it, things like that. But on Sunday evening, I, I, was, I saw this other guy on YouTube, and his name is Brother B Brandon, and... He has a YouTube called Last Days. And he has different testimonies and sharing about um, even, you know, working, cleaning the church and going through different persecutions and the Lord training and um, disciplining him like that. But he's keep on, you know, doing that. And one of his... Uh, visions that he had where his, he has an autistic daughter that has, you know, going through trials and things like that and, you know, wondering when will she get better and things like that and, you know, having to use the, having them carry the child to the party and everything and, but one day, boom, she got up and she went to use the party and God did, uh, helped her there because he was starting to change his declarations and speak, speak over her, speak life and health and everything like that. But he, God gave him a vision where Jesus showed him all his bleeding hands and the big, you know, 230-pound Roman soldiers 6-3, whipping Jesus, you know, full strength and power over and all that blood. And he says, you know, Brandon, you believe me? This is what I did for your healing of your daughter. And he said, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, I believe. And he says, as easy as you stand for your right for receiving salvation and the enemy can't take that away from you, it's the same belief and faith that you need for healing for your daughter and stand for her healing and thank me for it and uh, it's that same faith that will make her well and so he received that but but Sunday he, he gave this uh, prophet, prophecy and vision that he had and you know normally these different things you know I just keep them on my back burner, think about it, and not share it. But sometimes it's kind of good to wake us up and warn us just in case something happens, just like 
in these last days because the enemy is ruthless. <laughs> the devil is ruthless. We're seeing, you know, what happened in Lahaina and, you know, some people who got up that day and felt led, you know, the talking with the family, what you're going to do today? And says, oh, we're going to the other side. Come to Wailuku, work on the car a little bit, buy some supplies, and then come back to town. And so they went, you know, in the morning, come this side, going back home, and by 4, 4.30, they see all the smoke, and they had to stop towards Lanipoko with other cars and just, you know, watch what was happening over there. In Israel, which is 31 days from today back, they... Uh, you know, they had that, remember, Rosh Hashanah and then the Yom Kippur holidays and then coming up, you know, a couple of weeks later, the Shabbat, get up in the morning. And, you know, one guy said he was riding his bicycle in the kibbutz, kibbutz and different things like that. But the warning, the warning that people got to get inside your heart, you know, that, hey, it's not normal. This is not our normal Sabbath day, take it easy, everything. God's speaking to our heart, you know. He loves us. And one military unit, you know, their pilots was, you know, hey, getting all these alerts on their phone in the morning and, you know, decide to, hey, come on, we got to make a decision. They're calling their officers, their higher command, you know, what to do, give us some orders, everything. And then they finally decide, let's go load up the helicopter. You know, helicopter normally takes 33 people to be safe and ready to go. And they said, hearing more alerts on their phone, they said, let's go, we're going. We're going to go help the people. And so they went from 33 up to about 50 people in the full helicopter. They took off, you know, barely, and then went down towards the south in Israel and went to their, the airport to land. They circle, circle, circle around. They see uh, different people, and hey, something, something's not right at this airport. And so they landed off, you know, off to the side quickly, you know, try to get all of their uh, 50 men out. And all the soldiers, and one of them, you know, with his backpack gets stuck, you know, can I get out, can I get out? They got to help him out, and the pilots, and, and then all of a sudden, they, they start getting shot at. And they're on the tarmac and different thing, and one RPG hits the helicopter, boom, explode, you know, but nobody died. They were out and got everybody off like that. But many other testimonies, people were sharing of, you know, even being in their safe safe homes. They got a little room, a safe house too, you know, that is protected from bombs and blasts and everything. But because it's so safe, you cannot have a lock inside because if something gets locked, you cannot get out. So it's kind of like a freestanding, hold the door situation. And one lady was saying, she calling her relatives and everything and seeing online how they use this wooden poles to prop up the inside of the latch and everything like that. So praying and everything and God um, has her to find this oars, boat oars and a vacuum cleaner hose. And somehow she rigged it up to lock that door. And so from that morning, you know, early morning, 6, 7, 8, when things were shooting and happening and people were inside, she and her daughter said, quiet, quiet, be quiet. They're outside in the living room and everything. But they made it through, you know, 6 in the evening and that long stretch and things like that. But God just protected people. Amen. And Hallelujah. But this... You know, this brother Brandon was sharing that, hey, he saw, um, you know, New York. That was, hey, barren. Lights on and everything, a few people. And the, the moon was full, shiny moon, but just a sliver was dark. And a little bit of snow, you know, coming down. 
Then he mentioned, hey, Miami, Florida was also em empty, but all the lights in the city and everything. And I saw the same moon, you know. Then he said, oh, God had me from a bird's eye view up in heaven. And Jesus said, sit on my feet and be quiet and listen and watch. I want you to see, you know, from a higher vision, the earth. Then he's seen uh, Wyoming. Wyoming has uh, Yellowstone National Park where they have that um, geothermal, you know, kind of like super volcano there. But he saw a whole golden woven square, like a frame over the park. But then it lifted off the ground, and then he could see all the turmoil and, and things like that. Then his, his vision was shifted towards Portland, Oregon. And Portland, Oregon is, you know, Joe Rogan and Elon Musk said he's one of the woke, wokest city in America and rebellious and uh, liberal cities, you know, during the COVID times, you know, they were taking over parts of the city and things like that. And, but he said, and also Washington, Oregon has the Cascadia fault line kind of running through there that also runs towards California, the San Andreas area. But he said he saw a big, large earthquake hit that uh, Oregon, Washington area and even the Seattle Tower was down on the ground and turmoil and everything and a big tectonic shift and that whole um, region west of Portland was moving into the ocean and water was coming in for 100 miles, like five feet deep, all the way there like that. You know, it's like, whoo. It's like, you know, in the natural, you know, people would think, ah, nah, that cannot be, you know. We won't believe that. We'll continue in our ways. But, you know, kind of like sometimes God will speak to Ezekiel and speak to people and just that warning and it's like, we take heed, we live our lives, not in fear and everything. But he said from that uh, earthquake, there was a tsunami that hit the British BC coast. You know, I used to work in, from college, work three summers in Alaska at a national park where we, Kenai Fjords National Park, helped build a, a log cabin there by a, big old glacier that touches the ocean like that and also a salmon cannery also on a fishing boat just to make money through the summer but he said that tsunami hit all of that Anchorage area and Anchorage was on fire and he said he mentioned oh like Lahaina and so you know somebody mentioned you know in the comments there's like uh 400 something comments I wrote that numbers it says he had like already 40,000 views 494 comments and he has 76,000 subscribers and gotta add this is not financial advice this is spiritual advice but anyway one of the commenters said yeah you know maybe the gas line from Puro Bay coming through at, uh, Anchorage caused that fires and everything like that, you know. And a side note, you know, I'm thinking, hmm, Paradise, California has these unusual fires and now Al uh, Anchorage and Lahaina. And one, one guy, uh, this realtor, David West, who, who makes all the videos and was talking and raising funds for Lina, you know, he had a, just recently a poll that says, hey, you think that was a natural fire or direct energy weapon? And so I'm thinking, oh, direct energy weapon, you know, thinking, why did uh, this blue umbrellas, you know, 
and big blue 55 gallon drums and blue t-shirts not get you know pulverized and burnt up and everything you know hey it's the gamma rays the blue energy don't hit that you know or thinking uh wow look at this car in this area of a uh, empty lot in Lahaina you know the house is around doing okay but this this one rims melted engine melted oh you know and something on the highway you know also just by the grass coming up will melt a uh, SUV you know rims and tires and everything like that it's like whoa kind of you know a lot of research people start doing now about the you know what what took place and things like that but this man said this tsunami also went towards tokyo japan and so that's a warning for you know japan and you know what they're going through and coming to christ and things like that and then he said and it went towards hawaii and so it's like whoa hawaii so normally you wouldn't care or mention and things like that but then it's like hey if you kind of watch men and kind of warning and things like that it's like hawaii so you know sometimes when i driving an area along the beach road north you know it would go all the way towards seattle you know in the in northern region and so hey if pakakalo get a little bit of water and you can see the taco and everything like that hey you better you know think you know how much time you get hey 27 minutes to to go up to uh Waluku heights to that park up there you know and check things out a little bit or oh, if you get maybe a couple hours you know if they even warn you you can go up kiokea park you know kula and kind of watch things like that but if you're not warned in your spirit and everything, you're not even prepared or thinking in that line, you know. And because I'm thinking sometimes, hey, between in Oluwalo, between the high mountains of the Pali or on the Lahaina Bypass, that's two safe higher areas. But if something's, you know, and in the lower area in uh, Oluwalo is a little more risky, just little thoughts, eh, I don't get for fearful and things like that, but... You know, sometimes certain people, you know, ha can move easier. But if you have a big family, you kind of have to know at a moment's notice, we're going to get this, 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 and we're going to go, you know, tell the kids we're going to go for a picnic. And the kids will say, hey, where's all the food and everything? He said, oh, no, we're going to ha only have canned goods and whatever we, we bring in in our stockpile and all our records and things like that, you know. But at least something in your heart, you know, on the back burner file, you're like, okay, we know. We, you know, we'll make a few calls where everybody's at and we'll, we'll kind of test, test the situation because we live on an island and other things can happen, you know. Because um, my dad was living in Hilo, and that's how we even moved, came to this island and born on this island. Because before the April Fool's tidal wave, there was another tidal wave that hit the lower area of uh, Hilo on the big island. And it came up to shore so much, and you know the people, uh, you know, was backing up and ran away, and then they see how far it came, and then went back. Okay, so then, several years later, when they had the April Fool's fire, and people think, ah, oh, no, it'll be like the other tidal wave and everything like that, no worry and everything. So people was on the bridge, watching, in this whole area, and then it came from another direction. April Fools. And all the people were panicking and yelling to all the other people in the lower area. And my dad would tell the story that, wow, we had a two story wooden house and we didn't have any time. So um, my, his mom had to grab a little child and go through the water to high, uh, going to higher ground. And my dad had to grab his, uh, his, 
father who couldn't swim so well, and they tumbled and, and went through the uh, tidal wave to, uh, to another area. And so there was great devastation, and that's what brought them to, to live to Maui, you know, and then get started and everything like that. So there's things sometimes, warnings, and, you know, the Word always uh, prepares us and gets us on truth, and you get the Holy Ghost because your faith your spirit of God in you will help you, deliver you, make you well. And in closing, 1 John 4, 4, King James Version says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have overcome every demon, every evil spirit, every ruthless devil. <laughs> ha! Because the greater one, Le Prastalamo, will help you, put you over, help your kids. And the confessions are, I believe that the greater one lives in me. I believe that he is greater than the tests and trials I may be facing. I believe that he is greater than the storms I may be going through. I believe that he is greater than the problems that may be confronting me. I believe that he is greater than the circumstances which may appear to have me bound. I believe that the greater one is greater than sickness and disease. I believe that the greater one is greater than anything and everything. And the greater one dwells in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ooh, God in his wisdom has come to live, dwell, and raise us up, gives us warnings, and we heed his warnings and everything. And he loves us. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If there's any online who wants to come into the family of God, let me say this prayer with you. You can say after me, Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for, my, for me and was rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I make him Lord of my life. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit and I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. If you want to plant a seed into the ministry, you can type wordoftruthmaui.org hit the green button and follow the directions and we believe that all your seeds to the ministries 22 outreaches and even to the Lahaina outreach God will bless you God's a good God hallelujah and as you bless the church you bless the nation of Israel God will see to it that you and your family will be blessed hallelujah thank you